Hello, everybody. How is everyone doing? Welcome to my corner of the internet. Welcome to Isabella Banks' YouTube channel, where we discuss all things Harry, Megan, and their level up journey. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Wizzy, and it's so good to see you. As usual, there's a lot going on, from the toxic British media calling for the censorship of social media to the toxic British media attacking everyone who had a contrary opinion of the palace's fake photo scandal, to accusing foreign governments of spreading conspiracy theories, onto the palace video getting pushed back and the freedom of information requests being made regarding Kate's cancer statement video. Let's get into it. So as you might have heard, GB News has recently reported that the British media and the royal family have been discussing the possibility of censoring social media platforms. According to GB News, palace sources have spoken of hopes that social media giants might use the furor to tighten up systems that currently allow defamatory lies and conspiracy theories to spread unchecked. But guys, Here's the question, what are the defamatory lies that they're referring to? So far, no one has provided proof that it was Kate in the car with her mother or provided the original photo for the Mother's Day photo, the same way Miss and Harriman has had to do multiple times or has even proven that the farm shop video was real, as in that it was Kate who was seen smiling while out shopping with William, or whether that was even William. So what are they talking about when they refer to conspiracy theories? As a matter of fact, Victoria Newton has gone on record saying that the video was staged. Listen to this. Let's talk about the other big story that we talked briefly about at the beginning, and then we spoke to Paddy Harvison, who clearly, Victoria, in his view, yes, social media has acted in all sorts of crazy ways, it's been a bit like the Wild West, but he was also clear that the mainstream media has played a part in creating some of the frenzy. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you published this front page, I think which said, lay off Kate, we can show it, I think, to our viewers, maybe it'll pop up in a few seconds, there, there it is. So you were you know, sending that message, basically saying, leave her alone, but then your paper obtained, and I think paid for footage of her out shopping in Windsor, with William, and then today you've got nine pages in your Sunday edition all about the stories. So wasn't that a contradiction? I don't think so at all. No, um, I was really moved. The day of the Photoshop fail, when the whole world was attacking her, I just thought it was outrageous. This poor woman was clearly ill and was so desperate that she, she tweaked a photo, minor tweaks, to make it look a little bit better. So that's why I did that front page, and it was really important. It then changed the narrative. A lot of the rest of the media then started saying, back off, Kate. So I don't accept uh, what you said earlier. Um, in terms of reporting the fact that they went out to the Windsor farm shop um, a few days later, they knew that if they went out there in, in public, mingled with members of the public, they would be seen and potentially photographed because everyone's got a camera phone now. And that's how it happened. It wasn't a photographer, it was a camera phone. And of course, I was in discussions with the palace all along with that. And there was no problem with us running those images. And it kind of felt that the nation was desperate to see her. Someone on Twitter said, the British media and the royal family are now talking about censorship and cracking down on social media platforms because they were exposed by ordinary citizens as frauds. They had no issues with trolls spreading lies about Prince Harry and Meghan. Nice try. Hashtag toxic British media. Exactly. Not satisfied with trying to shut down the whole of social media, they have now taken to attacking anyone who does not agree with them, like Christopher Boozy. Look at this headline. How tech entrepreneur and loyal Sussex Squad member Christopher Boozy vowed to fight online hate, but once said Kate Middleton looked old enough to be Harry's aunt and called William a balding muppet. They say Sussex Ali, Christopher Boozy, insists he is railing against online bile and told the couple's Netflix documentary that criticism of Meghan Markle was driven by hatred and racism. The Brooklyn-born tech entrepreneur, 48, who began coding on a Mattel computer, age nine, was inspired to combat disinformation and harassment online because of the 2016 Trump election win and the death of his mother during the pandemic. 
Personally, I found the article interesting because through it, I came to know a bit more about Christopher Boozy, how he started coding at nine and how he was inspired to combat disinformation and harassment online because of the 2016 Trump election win and the death of his mother during the pandemic. Anyway, they continue. He denies he's a conspiracy theorist, but also insists that the video of the Princess of Wales at a Windsor farm shop 10 days ago is a fake because the woman with William looked 10 years younger than Kate. The Princess of Wales was filmed 10 days ago at her favorite farm shop in Windsor buying bread. She then left with William smiling while carrying her shopping. Millions around the world delighted in seeing her, but Mr. Boozy is insistent that it was not her in the video at all. I think at this juncture, they are quoting Christopher Boozy, right? When they say, Winter Farm Kate walks like a young woman rushing to use the bathroom. Moreover, Winter Farm Kate looks 10 years younger than Kate. So no, we haven't seen Kate in public yet, he said last week. Doubling down on Saturday after Kate's cancer video, he said, I'm not the least bit embarrassed. I said the woman in the Windsor Farm video wasn't Kate, and she's not. Kate bravely sharing her cancer diagnosis has nothing to do with the smiling person who was walking fast and holding a grocery bag. I am vaccinated against gaslighting. As we said before, his activism online was inspired by his mother and his aim is to force Twitter and other social media to remove misinformation from their platforms. And they continue. Yet, within 30 minutes of Kate's broadcast, he was fueling the fire surrounding conspiracy theories about Kate in a rant to his 350,000 followers on X. He says, they quote, I am sorry to hear Kate has cancer. I hope she has a full recovery, but it's also clear that all three earlier photos of her were fake and the palace tried to cover it up, he wrote. Mr. Boozy, who appeared on the Sussex's Netflix show, was apparently referencing Kate's Mother's Day photo, a video of her shopping in winter and an image of her being driven in a car. Please, they are claiming that his statements regarding the earlier fake photos and video offerings by Kensington Palace are conspiracy theories. Hmm. People of the UK, we are in trouble, don't you think? Where has freedom of speech gone? Another person they have tried to attack is Stephen Colbert for his segment on Kate and Rose Chumley last week. Well, this is what he had to say in response to their attempts to attack him. Listen to this. I don't know if you have noticed, but we do a lot of shows. And I tell a lot of jokes and I tell jokes about a lot of different things, mostly what everybody's talking about. And for the last six weeks to two months, everybody has been talking about the mystery of Kate Middleton's disappearance from public life. And two weeks ago, we did some jokes about that mystery and all the attendant reporting about that. And when I made those jokes, that upset some people. And even before her diagnosis was revealed, and I can understand that. I mean, a lot of my jokes have upset people in the past, and I'm sure some of my jokes will upset people in the future. But there's a standard that I try to hold myself to, and that is I do not make light of somebody else's tragedy. Now, I don't know whether her prognosis is a tragic one. She's the future of Queen of England, and I assume she's going to get the best possible medical care. But regardless of what it is, I know, and I'm sure many of you, far too many of us know, that any cancer diagnosis of any kind is harrowing for the patient and for their family. And though I'm sure they don't need it from me. I and everyone here at The Late Show would like to extend our well wishes and heartfelt hope that her recovery is swift and thorough. Now, please say hello to Lewis Cato and The Late Show Band. Can you believe that Chris Ship? 
try to claim that Stephen Colbert apologized for his joke <laughs> last week <laughs> in this video. Did you hear any apology? Looks like my ears have been searching for the apology, but my ears have not been able to find them. If you heard the apology, please let me know where the apology was in the comment section. Before we continue, if you're new here, I invite you to join our growing community. We are in interesting times indeed. I'm sure that many of us have not lived through times like this before. And on this channel, we not only discuss what is trending, but we analyze this current state of affairs and sometimes we take action. So you see, there's something for everyone. Also, if you're a returning viewer who has not yet subscribed, go ahead subscribe to our channel, support our growth goals, okay? For all those who have already subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. In addition to subscribing, can I encourage you to please like and share and leave a comment in this video. If you feel like you don't know what to say, leave a hard emoji or something like that in the comment section. Every little helps. Okay, moving on. I wondered what the long-term implications of the British media insisting that private individuals who have expressed their own opinions would be. I certainly thought that that line of attack was not going to be sustainable because it could potentially lead to an international incident resulting in war. With regard to the attacks on Christopher Boozy, he took them on and challenged each and every article he could find online about any reporting on him and the comments he made preceding, during and after the cancer video statement was made. Seeing as he was tackling the British media article by article, they found that they could not make that narrative stick. So what did they do next? Ta-da! China and Russia spreading slurs against the Princess of Wales. Was I surprised to see that they had changed the headline to the one on the screen? No, not really, because it seems like they're ready and willing to attack everyone for their own mistakes rather than being accountable. But the pushback they're getting is super fierce. But in typical British fashion, they had to string it out a little bit. This is a screenshot of Good Morning Britain spreading conspiracy theories while claiming that conspiracy theories are being spread. And that seems to be what the new UK media has been assigned to do, which is quite embarrassing and shocking all at the same time. I mean, they have no proof that China, Russia or Iran are behind the widespread of the photoshop fail that is the only thing that i think a third party can be responsible for the way that the news completely took over the news cycle for the last couple of weeks but as to the actual events they are complaining about well they should hold themselves responsible because it was the palace who attempted all those stunts the fake mother's day photo Kate in the car with her mother, Kate seen out at the farm shop. It was all of them, the machine behind them as well, who are responsible for the kerfuffle that resulted of them trying to engineer public perception behind the scenes. But in their typical fashion, rather than taking responsibility, they are trying to flex their international influence by trying to see whether they can drag weaker nations into the controversy. I would recommend that they be careful because we are already tired. We've been tired of the war between Ukraine and Russia, and you have the war between Palestine and Israel going on. We do not need to have a breakdown of relations with the UK and America and China, Russia and Iran because those other countries are a lot bigger than the UK. The UK tend to forget that they're just a small island 
And even if the, they wanted to conscript the Commonwealth nations to join them in the fight, it's still not going to be enough to make up a, an army that can stand against any one of those four nations, America, China, Russia, and, and Iran. The only thing I think they have going for them is their wealth. And that means ability to buy mercenaries to assist them in the war and advanced technology. But other than that, if it is by country size, no, they are not going to be able to take any one of those nations on. And it's an issue that we are facing now as citizens of the United Kingdom, where we are being told that we do not have freedom of expression. And it's quite ironical that this is the same reason why the UK has said that they didn't want to be part of the EU anymore because they felt like they were being hampered by EU regulations. But it's quite evident at the moment that the EU regulations actually called for a fairer society because we seem to be slipping back into the draconian age where freedom of expression is being limited more than it has ever been limited in my time of existence. Luckily, there is a lot of pushback against this kind of behavior that I'm seeing. Um, you've got people on Twitter saying, and recognizing the behavior for what it is, saying, scraping the barrel now, China, Russia, and Iran are reportedly behind the spread of conspiracy theories, slurs, and rumors about the Princess of Wales. And truly, they are scraping the barrel. And then you've got people on social media, uh, this um, news agency called Unity News Net, who have sent this urgent freedom of information request to the BBC in relation to broadcasts of Princess Catherine on Friday night. So they say, hello, I'm writing in relation to the broadcast from Kensington Palace on the evening of the 22nd of March. It has been stated that the video of Princess Catherine was taken on Wednesday the 20th. We have read the following article and notes BBC Studios' emphasis on responsibility and innovation in, in relation to the use of AI. We therefore have the following questions. Was there any use of artificial intelligence in the aforementioned video? Was any of the footage or audio computer generated? By audio, we mean the words spoken by Princess Catherine and or the background noise. Where was this filmed exactly? The setting appears to be a garden, but was it done in a studio? Was a green screen or other similar technology used? Post filming, was there any use of software for digital alterations? As we are sure you will be aware, there is a great deal of speculation going on and these matters should be answered as a matter of urgency. Kind regards, David Clues, lead correspondent. So guys, I love it when there is a controversy going around and there is an action that can be taken to combat the situation. An example of this template, which has been provided by New Unity News Net, is an example of that. I will be copying and pasting the exact same thing and sending it to the BBC as well. If you would like to do the same, I will leave the link to this tweet in the description box of this video for access to the text. I will also leave the email address where you can send your own freedom of information requests if you would like to do that. Perhaps if we all join hands together, we may get some truth about this situation. If nothing else is achieved, at least we will hold them accountable and stop ourselves from moving 100 years backwards in terms of the advancement of freedom of speech and, and expression wonder why they are trying to take us backwards anyway that's all i have for now thank you all for joining me see you in the next one in the meantime this is wheezy signing out ciao